Now that you've got some basic Unix commands down, the next step is to start looking at um, a text editor. If you're not going to use Emacs, obviously disregard this whole thing, but um, I'm going to go over some of the Emacs commands. So I'm going to put myself in my projects folder. There's nothing in here. And what I'd like to do is create a file inside of here. So I'm going to do Emacs, maybe file.cpp, so a C++ file. So now I'm actually in Emacs, which is basically a console. So I can actually start typing things in right now. There's some information that goes on down here, what file you're in. Um, so if I start typing in include iostream, for example, which is something we'll need for C++, um, notice that it's doing automatic highlighting for me. So it'll try and color code some things. Now, the color coding isn't real great. Sometimes it'll cause problems. Um, it's not always smart about uh, comments, for example. But it will, generally speaking, when you're commenting something out, make it red. Uh, keywords will be blue. Things that you're putting in as variables and whatnot will be green, and so on. So if I have something like this, notice that it's color coding it. And then let's see. Let's see out. Stuff. So let's say that I actually have created this file and I want to save it. Um, there's a lot of Emacs commands which basically use escape characters. So if I go look at these Emacs commands on my website, underneath the Unix tutorial, it goes over some of these things. Now, usually, um, the way you get into particular um, states is you use Control X in this case, or MX, which is called the Meta X. For us, it's usually the Alt key is the uh, Meta key. So if I want to save, the way I do that is I actually do Control X to get into the that particular state, and then Control S is the save, and it'll write it out. And then let's say I want to get back out to the main file system. So I'll do Control X and Control C to exit. If you hadn't saved, it would have asked if you want to save, save or not. So you do yes or no, Y or N. So now if I go look at this, notice that file CPP shows up. Um, if I do, a, let's compile that file, see if I did it right in the C++ way. So let's see. I want to rename it file.exe, and the CPP file is that. So that should compile it, assuming I did things right. Notice now it has a file.exe. And if I want to run this, I do dot slash file, and away we go. We have stuff. Very cool. So now if I want to go edit it again, I just do the file.cpp again. And here I am back to where I was. Uh, there's a few commands um, that are useful to know. One thing that's really useful is that when a compiler has an issue, it'll tell you a line number. And you can count, or you can get to the particular line and look at this little counter here. But oftentimes, it's more useful to have it actually show you the line, line numbers. So if I do alt x l i n u m. L-I-N-U-M means line numbers. So now it's actually showing me all the line numbers. Kind of cool. Those are the two main things I wanted to show you. Um, there's a lot of commands for cutting and pasting that are built in. There are commands for killing lines. So Control-K kills a whole line. Um, so it's probably worthwhile to go through and familiar, familiarize yourself with all the editing you can do. It might be worth trying to like create a basic file, just guessing at what all you need and then going in and looking at all the commands after you've got a basic idea of how all of this works. Um, so like page up, page down, those kind of things are useful. You can actually create multiple windows, so you could actually divide up this console into two. A lot of things like that. That's basically what I want to show you about Emacs.